First of all, I want to thank Osama and Hamid for giving me this opportunity to share with you some thoughts on data science as ecosystem, as well as the pedagogical challenges and opportunities come with it. I also want to thank many authors of Harvard Data Science Review who have provided me with much food for thought. And several of them are in today's meeting and you will hear from them directly. In my first editorial of Harvard Data Science Review, I used the phrase ecosystem to describe the data science just because it had evolved into such a vast a landscape, a community that I was having a hard time to describe it otherwise. And uh, uh, people ask me what do I mean by uh, ecosystem? Well, because it has become so big, um, so enormous, that uh, I saw that the best way to define it is not about what it is, because I don't know how, but defined through its complement uh, as, as a trained, as a pure mathematician, right? That's the way to do it. And so I saw it would be easier to describe what it is not. And uh, I guess many of you would agree with me, data science is not just machine learning or just statistics. Data science is not all about prediction. Data science is not only about data analysis. Data science is not a discipline that sits merely within the STEM field. But my punchline is really data science is not even discipline by itself. And this is important to recognize because without recognizing that uh, I know that there are universities who have tried to uh, squeeze everything into a department of data science. Now I would argue that will be really a wrong unit to provide the best data science education. Imagine that uh, uh, you try to create a department of science, right? We all have heard about there are science and scientists, but rarely you have heard about somewhere there's a department of science. And same as for social science, a social scientist, right? Rarely you hear about the Department of Social Science, but there are Department of Sociology, Social Work, right? That's, but that's a branch of them. Similarly, there are humanities and humanists, but few Department of Humanities, right? The point I want to make here is data science has really become a collection of uh, disciplines that uh, all have a common shared goal, but they really, uh, they complement each other, but they are not really a single discipline. Now, um, I very much like uh, Jeanette Wing's uh, description about what the data science is. I'm very glad that Jeanette today is serving on the panel, so you will hear from her directly. And, uh, but Jeanette, uh, in the first uh, issue of the Harvard Data Science Review, Jeanette published uh, uh, her uh, very uh, succinct description of data science, the data science, the study of extract value from data. Now, although it's easy to say, the process itself is very long, and this is where you, ha you need a multiple, um, disciplines to contribute, right? There's the generation, collection, processing, storage, management, analysis, visualization, interpret interpretation, but there's even more beyond that, right? There are data reuse, there are conception, uh, you know, uh, how do you uh, conceptualize what data means? There are all the issues, there are privacy and asset concerns throughout. And this basically shows, give you a, a very quick uh, <clears throat> indication of how vast the landscape of data science is. Now, if you look online and you can search easily to look for what would be qualified as a data scientist or modern data scientist, you soon will find these overwhelming uh, list, right? You find, you know, this is just one of many examples. Uh, you find that the people say, well, data scientist needs to know math and statistics. Sure, that's important. Data science needs the domain knowledge of soft skill, of course. Uh, data scientist needs a programming and a database, right? Of course and communication and individualizations, everything. The, the one I really like is what it says that data scientists should be able to engage with senior management. Well, that's not an easy skill. I doubt many data scientists actually have equipped that, that skill. Now, the point here is that if you're trying to squeeze all those things into one department or trying to teach one person to have all these skills, what we're gonna end up with is very much like, you know, everyone was gonna have, going to understand a little bit of everything but very few people really have a deep take, a deep dive into you know, critical uh, parts of it, right? So I was using this analogy, some of you may have heard this phrase called a tiger mom, right? This means that these are parents because they want their kids to do everything, play piano, you know, study well, do swimming, everything. So I basically just trying to remind people, let's not make data science a tiger parents. Let's don't try to, uh, you know, try to teach everything just to, uh, one person wanted one person to to really know it. We really need teamwork, and this is a point uh, is made very clearly uh, by uh, Professor 
Devapur, who's going to, uh, I think we're going to talk very soon, and on this very topic published the Harvard Data Science Review. So I'm not going to uh, <clears throat> steal his thunder, but his point is we really need to, to have teams. And the, uh, the uh, National uh, Academy of Science that uh, they issued the report on undergraduate data science opportunity and options, and in which they emphasize the uh, notion of data acumen. And uh, uh, again, Hop Data Science Review in the first issue interviewed uh, two of their co-chairs and conducted by my uh, co-editor on data science education, uh, Rob Lu here. And uh, uh, so the whole notion of data acumen is essentially say the students need to have that kind of sophistication, being able to uh, do the data analysis, but the more importantly have that kind of judgment uh, a point uh, I will return uh, you know return soon and uh, my provost our uh, Harvard provost Alan Garber in his editorial for the first issue wrote more broadly about what the educated citizen needs to know about data science and his point probably will not surprise you that his point is every educated citizen should have a basic ability to reason and uncertainty understand the basic statistics probably the argument and not confuse a causation with a correlation that common uh, you know common uh, emphasis that, that we have uh, put in our education system um, for this workshop, actually, I will say that I really thank uh, some Hami again. It is because of the article that get us together leads to uh, partly leads to this workshop, and you can hear a lot from Osama directly about what they're doing, which is really quite exciting. So again, I will not uh, get into detail here. What I do want to emphasize is the a few points that I think needs really a lot more emphasis uh, in terms of data science education, broadly training in industry. Uh, government as well. I know there will be more, many points be discussed today, so I will just focus on these three points. I feel there's not enough emphasis yet, and I hope that I will encourage everybody to think about this. First is what I call the principle of corner cutting. Anyone has done the real data science, not like they're just teaching sitting in the, in, in the academic world, but you know that in real life, there's a time constraint, there's a cost constraint, you need to deliver results, you always have to cut the corners. Uh, no data science project can be ever perfect, right? And uh, I don't even know how that can be because there's always assumption made, there's always something go wrong. But when you have resource constraint, time constraint, you need to know like what would be the corners you can cut first that, uh, you know, that you cut these corners will have least damage and depends on how much resource you, uh, you have, right? Uh, you, you know, you made the model may not be a linear regression, but hey, if I want to do something very quickly, I'll run least square, I might get something giving me a general indication and have a little more time, I may do a polynomial or do something fancier. On the other hand, it doesn't mean that you can cut corners in anything, right? And for example, I see people run linear regression on binary data, oh, that's a no-no, right? And people understand why I say that's a no-no, but that's a kind of a, you know, principle that you understand what kind of things you can cut corners, don't do too much damage, when you have more time, you go back to few, uh, you know, put back these corners, and what kind of things, even you don't have any resources in your time, you should not do it, right? And I don't think we have uh, taught enough the sequence of like, what do you cut first, and you cut less, then you, you, know, you do those things. I think that's where we need to teach a lot more about that. The second is really understand the data quality, and particularly this notion called dark data, which is basically all data you do not see, but they really, really, uh, make a difference. I will on the next slides. We're going to uh, talk a little bit more about that. And the third is to recognizing uh, cherry picking all disguises. We all understand cherry picking is bad, particularly for data science because you present evidence far stronger than than it it, it really it is. But we actually also engage all kinds of uh, cherry picking activities ourselves. I'm going to have a long list. The, the, the issue is how to recognize which one is okay, which one is not. Now the grand challenge of teaching all of those things is that we need many more data savvy or data science savvy teachers and the trainers. And that's what we don't have. Teach those things are not, you can read the textbook or even just you know, uh, see how people have done those. You really need to get a feeling about those things. For instance, corner cutting definitely, uh, understanding, recognize all kinds of dark data. Absolutely, you, you need experience and the cherry picking you need to really have done quite a few times then you realize, hmm, that is actually a form of, of cherry picking. So now let me get into some of details first about the dark side of data science. Uh, David Hand, the, uh, actually the uh, column editor for Harvard Data Science Review on the diving into data, he wrote a book on the dark data and I strongly encourage people to uh, read it and uh, uh, I don't take any commission here, so this is, uh, truly a free advertisement and uh, because he talked about you know 
data that we know they're missing. Okay, that's an easy one, right? Because and but what's not easy is many people don't realize the missing data do not missing uh, in a random fashion. So anytime you analyze the data as you observed, you probably engaged in analyzing some biased representation, and you know how biased representation can give you give you trouble. Harder ones are data that we don't even know they're missing, right? How would you deal with that? Well, there's a wonderful tools like randomization, right? Clinical trial, you do randomizations to guard against confounding factors that you don't even know they exist, but the randomization uh, takes care of that. But of course, you know, how to implement that correctly takes a lot of work and a lot of experience. Uh, we do this all the time, right? Just choosing some cases, well, you know, these things look supporting my theory, or well, that's really troublesome because there are lots of other cases you don't see or you actually hide them that are actually give you a very different stories, right? Because of time, I'm not gonna go on uh, with every one of them, but um, they we actually wrote 15 different kinds. If you just read the titles, you may or may not realize why this is even a dark data issue, but if you read it, and I certainly read it uh, myself that I understand uh, to what he meant, you may or may not agree with every form he, he suggested, but I think it's a very important to for you to recognize there are all these different kinds of ways that data, so you don't see them, but they actually really matters because they bias your results in a ways that you may or may not anticipate it. I did write a, a small article about this uh, dark data on my uh, Excel 5 blog, so if you, uh, you're uh, very welcome to, to read it. And uh, I also want to talk about this uh, cherry picking, right? There's what I call seven things, really seven selection biases. Um, there are all kinds of forms of selections we do. And many of them you say, what's wrong with that, right? For example, we always we do selection hypothesis. We, we choose what hypothesis we, we want to test. But we're not going to test anything. We want to choose some uh, test, right? And that sometimes gives you trouble. For example, if you call a subgroup analysis, you didn't get the answer you want. You look for a smaller uh, subpopulation doing clinical trials. That drug did not work for everybody, but maybe work for a certain age group. But you know how this multiplicity of hypothesis testing kicks in. That's just one form of selection bias, right? Selection in data. We always choose data that uh, seem to work for us. We delete outliers. Or we only use the complete cases. We select the methodology, right? For goodness fit test. Uh, you know, we find a, a test which makes sure that it shows that you know our model fits when some other tests may show it actually failed. Uh, we selectively uh, debug things. I certainly have committed this crime in the sense that when I got the results I want, I said, oh yeah, that's fine. And, but when the results don't really look like what I wanted, I would say, okay, let's debug it, right? And we do that all the time. Uh, selection publication, we all know well. Uh, most publications, uh, most papers get published because the p-value is significant. What about all the studies out there? Not significant, right? You don't see them, right? Selection reporting summary, as we all know well, that even a paper is written very carefully with all kinds of caveat. By the time it gets reported in the media, they only pick up at the most juicy part, completely forget all the things, the limitations, right? And then the last one's probably the most harder one for us to recognize that we hope we have a selection of our understanding and interpretations. We tend to buy in the results, say, yeah, that makes common sense. You know, that, that seems, uh, you know, consistent with my, what I expected. And you're much more uh, going to promote these results without realizing in that common sense interpretation, you may have just engaged in a very selective way of, uh, uh, you know, reporting. Uh, reporting. Now, as I said, all these selections are inevitable. Some of them are necessary. So what's wrong is not the selection themselves. Uh, without the selection, we probably cannot even do science. What's wrong is that, that when we do the selections that we forgot to adjust the denominator uh, in our probability calculations. What do I mean by that? All probability in a very simple form is a ratio. Right? In the numerator is how many cases I care about. In, in the denominator is how many cases that are out there. Anytime you do selection, you change the denominator. Now you can see that by doing all kinds of selections, your denominators keep changing, that in the end you may get the results are so significant, you're very excited about, but you forgot that along the way you have cherry picked so much, right? And the, the hardest part of doing, uh, preventive of doing this is that many, many methods out there, whether it's in machine learning, statistics, computer science, engineering, anywhere, we do all these color co uh, co corrections based on the kind of probabilistic argument. Those we know how to quantify, we know how to, how to correct. The one we don't know, are these more qualitative adjustments, like reporting, right? Like, you know, I have a selective memory to, to do things. How do, you, how do you modify those things? So a savvy data scientist uh, really need to take those things into account. And to teach those things are incredibly hard because they are very hard to quantify. But that's exactly 
where some of, some of the challenges are. Let me stop here to take some questions. And I do want to uh, uh, further advertise Harvard Data Science Review because it's entirely free and it's open access. Uh, you can find on that website. Uh, there, uh, don't be uh, surprised seeing MIT press there. Harvard and MIT have now merged. And the reason we do, uh, we go with MIT press because Harvard University Press does not print journals, they only do books. All right, and thank you very much for listening and I'm happy to take some questions. Thank you all for listening. And uh, I already uh, uh, you know, got a question here. And let me read the question. So you mentioned that we need a data science savvy uh, trainers to teach data science with the industry needs so many practitioners. Do you think it might be challenging to have enough of those? That's exactly my point. It's very challenging. That's why we need to start now. And uh, uh, I think that this is going to take a generations for us to have uh, more people teach data science that uh, they actually have done it themselves. They have to get their hands dirty. Because you know, it took me years to understand that uh, um, Doing the real, you know, this is even pre-data science to do statistics is do well. It's really hard because there's so many judgments you need to make. There are lots of very nuanced uh, considerations, and uh, you you sometimes rely on gut feelings and uh, you know but try things, guard against yourself being this you know as well as I said cherry picking. Understand data you don't you have not seen. A lot of things are uh, as uh, as a John Tukey used to say, right? It's a, it's a, it's a statistics. A lot of things is is like engineer itself, and certainly the data science even more so. Right? And so, uh, this is a great question. I think my point here is to remind people that uh, providing good data science education uh, training. The hardest part is we don't have enough trainers. So this is kind of a we think you're doing it, and you know a lot of people in industry you have great experience come to uh, academia to teach more. And I know uh, there's a lot of uh, places like a master program, they're really welcome. Um, you know, people have experience to come to teach. And I think they need a lot more uh, partnership between academia, industry, government. Let's don't forget lots of government agencies that struggle with, with you know, exactly uh, these same, uh, you know, same issues about, about training people. So that was a part of the reason uh, the Harvard Data Science we set up trying to have a conversation between industry, government, and academia. So thank you for that question.